Aperture. Thank you everyone for making it here today. I know, well, uh, it's been a very busy weekend in the photo world with the New York Art Book Fair. I'm curious how many people went. Yep, yep, very exhausting. But thank, so thank you all the more for coming out on Monday. My name is Leslie Martin. I'm the publisher of the Aperture Foundation Book Prize and the publisher of the Photo Book Review as well. And um, for those of you who don't know, Aperture is a not-for-profit foundation. And we have a, an array of programs that is intended to connect the sharpest ideas and the best work with audiences in print, in person, and online. And um, we are very grateful to have the support of a number of people who allow us to do this on a regular basis. Um, public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. And uh, also, of course, we need to thank the board and the members of the Aperture Foundation because we are now a member organization and it's a great way to be involved and to know what we're doing. Um, for this project in particular, mm -hmm. Jeff Lau's New York, um, we would like to thank the Deutsche Bank. Uh, we'd like to thank Justin and Mary Lou Hildenbrand and Robert and Ellen Grimes for their individual support that made the book uh, possible and for a number of others, again, including our board of trustees. Um, so a book that is as big as a city block, of course, has a lot of contributors to it, not just Jeff as the creator of the work, but also um, we had a very nice contribution by Justin Davidson who is a Pulitzer Prize winner um, and a regular contributor to New York Magazine who writes about the kind of eternally evolving nature of New York City. Um, it's, a, it's a good read. I encourage you to take a look at it um, when you buy your books after the talk and we have a book signing. Um, also, uh, the other text is by Sean Corcoran who joins us today. Sean is the curator of prints and photographs at the New York Museum, the city, wait, the Museum of the City of New York. There you go. <laughs> and uh, he is also curating an exhibition of Jeff's work, which will open on October 15th. So this all comes together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I wanted to thank Samantha Marlowe, who was the project editor and put together the really amazing sequence and helped keep the book together as well. Um, and I'm sure Jeff has many people to thank, but that's okay. Um, I always, I often, in my role as publisher and editor, I'm always thinking about what the right format is for a book and with work of the nature of Jeff's in which scale, size, and detail is really critical. Um, this presented a particular challenge. And when we started out, I think we had an idea that it could be a little smaller, maybe just a, a little smaller, but um, Jeff had a very clear sense of what he, how he could see his vision of the book, and we worked, and we had it in two different sizes, and finally, I really I have, I have to confess, this is the right format for the book. I mean, it's, as I, uh, as we continued to work on it. I noticed more and more little details, more and more tiny little dots of color and, you know, people. And I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. Jeff was also on press and ensured that the color is as spectacular as his prints, uh, which is sometimes difficult to do. And, um, yeah, no, I think this is a great contribution. And I think as a way of kind of reinforcing that optimism that sometimes slips out of our grasp as New York City inhabitants. This is a great way of reminding us why we live here, why we care about the city. There's, you know, wonderful vistas, individual portraits, Occupy Wall Street, the circus. It's kind of all in this book, and I, for one, am going to enjoy giving it as a Christmas gift this, this Christmas. So. Um, I'm going to just say a few words about Jeff, and um, he was born in Taiwan in 1977. Um, 
first received recognition for a series called Habitat 7, parts of which is included in this work. I should say the book is a 10-year uh, collection of 10 years of work, and that was definitely the first body of work that I saw. It appeared in the pages of the New York Times Magazine. I think you were still a student, or re just graduating, graduate student at School of Visual Arts. Um, saw it in the pages of the New York Times Magazine, so this is a nice way to bring it all together. I happen to live in Long Island City, so I was especially tickled by it and the way that it captured time and light and space in a neighborhood I knew really well and made me see it fresh, which is always great. Um, after that, he has gone on to um, publish the work in New York Magazine quite a lot, lots of other places. Um, he has been exhibited at the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Um, has been in group shows at the Museum of the City of New York, at the Queens Museum of Art, and the Bronx Museum of Art. And it's our hope that with this book, it will soon be everywhere around the world. So, We're going to have a little conversation here, just a fairly a good, intimate chat with Jeff and Sean. Thank you. So uh, really, I, I'm just going to ask a few questions at the beginning, and then Jeff's going to show a bit of his work, and then we'll have a few questions sure. uh, towards the end. And of course, we should start, at, of course, at the beginning. And uh, how did you come to New York? And how did you uh, come to photography? Um, in 1997, I just graduated from high school in Vancouver. And I start my uh, college as an economy major student. And uh, I had no idea about economy. <laughs> and, uh, but that summer, I was... Was that uh, parental pressure? No, it's just I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, last summer I uh, ran into this camera club in Vancouver and hang out with a lot of uh, photographers there after many, many cameras, many, many lens, I decided myself that I was still young. I should get into photography if I had the chance. Then I took a one year off and put my parents, they were really pissed, anyway. And then I create my uh, portfolio and I apply my school in United States. And later on, I got accepted by RIT and uh, in Brain Rochester. Institute. Right. And, uh, uh, San Francisco Art Institute. Anyway, then I decided that I have to come to New York City, which uh, I read, so then I was here. And I'm so happy to see my teacher sitting here, and thank you, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> From Pratt, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, 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 as you guys know, Pratt is a Bauhaus uh, school, and which, which means the first and second year, you have to uh, study uh, a drawing and the light color design first before you actually really shooting with a camera and uh, which is a great uh, way to teach uh, an artist. If you guys really uh, uh, want to be an artist, I think basic training is very important. Uh, after I came to New York, I studied street photography and documentary and also photojournalism. Uh, in my a junior year of my prep, I went to Magnum to become an intern there. And I studied so many of uh, those great photographers, and, uh and I tried to be one of them. So um, right now we're going to see uh, my project when I was junior year, I made when I was a student. This project was a documentary of uh, a typhoon uh, who hit uh, Taiwan. The air, it's called uh, Taozi Typhoon, which uh, hit the same area, uh, had a huge earthquake two years before. And uh, I had a chance to go down there and took the shot. And uh, this was my very first uh, Leica 35 millimeter uh, type of uh, documentary. I don't think you see any of this. Just this morning. Yes. <laughs> you know, 
when, when you look at the picture here, uh, this is the second floor. So all the earth floor just wiped through the area. You see the huge rock that go into the house. And when I was in that area with a helicopter go down there, you don't see any people got injured. Hmm. Either you escape or you are under the rock. So which was a very sad area. And uh, you will see a lot of military uh, people, they uh, try to sanitize the area. And uh, also the interesting thing was those soldiers, they are the same age as me. And I, I didn't go to army because I had a school thing going. So that was really fun. So you really started out as a black and white photographer. I, I'm still calling myself a black and white photographer. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's a chance I will, well, I will explain later why I choose color as my medium for now. And, uh, but you know, by the time uh, all the Magnum photographers, they are like my big time hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, I study their contest and I noticed that I cannot be better. <laughs> there's no way. And those, yeah. So, um, you have humility. Yeah. So what kind of feedback were you getting in school for this work? You know, I, I use this body of work to apply my graduate school, so okay. that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, in uh, 2002, uh, actually 2001, um, I started to use a by 10 camera mm -hmm. because uh, you know, during the time, uh, Lois Connor, who just had her uh, China book published, and she came to the Pratt Institute to have a talk about her entire project. Mm -hmm. And uh, her work is really inspired to me, and, uh, and also the panorama, mm -hmm. which just makes sense to me at the time. Then uh, after her talk, I went up to her and asked her, so Lois, how can you carry all those uh, huge camera walk around in, in China. And she looked at me, she she, think, uh, she knew I am Chinese, and she spoke Mandarin back to me, say, Jeff, I have a very strong and healthy body. <laughs> now, you know, at the time, that was a really uh, right push for me to jump from four by five to eight by 10. And uh, later and on, by this point, you were at SVA, right? Uh, no, that was at Pratt. At Pratt, I, okay. I was shooting eight by ten when I was undergrad, and uh, uh, maybe I told you before because I was a poor student, I don't have money to buy film, so I have to go to all the camera store and ask them to buy the expired film. Then later on, I can scan and uh, to do the color correction in the in the Photoshop. And, and was this the reason why you started to make panoramic photographs? Yeah, um, and there actually there was an incident um, uh, when I was a press student. The teacher took us to a photo lab. Dur during the time, Gregory Cruzan was making a poster six feet under for, for HBO. And we went in, that opened my mind because Gregory Cruzan's uh, poster, every single thing in the picture, they all shot separately. So if you remember the poster, you, you, you can remember there's a, a lot of rows in the front and there's a coffin in the back. 
everything was shot separately and then digitally put together. And that, that kind of clicked to me. And also 2001, I believe Gursky had a, the huge show in, in MoMA. Mm. So that inspired me a little bit. I mean, a lot, yeah. Uh, here we're going to show my uh, CSIS project from Pratt Institute. And uh, during the time, uh, Abaddon, Richard Abaddon and uh, Urban Penn was like a big hero of mine. They are still big heroes of mine. So I was trying to do portrait with 8x10 with a uh, stroke. And uh, this project called Nature versus Nurture, which is to talk about my identity search as a, a foreigner student who study here and try to survive and try to be here and try to know who I was. And uh, this, half of this project was shot in Taiwan and half of this project was shot here. And a, a lot of American born Chinese, they grew up here every Saturday they have to go to this Chinese school to study Chinese culture. But ironically, in Taiwan, uh, as an elementary school student, and the Taiwan education, they try to put as much as Western education to them as much. Yes. And so um, this kind of, uh, you know, the other day my girlfriend just said, Jip, why all, the, all your portraits look like you? Because I, I think I was looking for myself mm. through this, th these pictures. This is pretty radically different from what you go on to do. Would you go, do you, do you think you'll go back to making portraits someday? I, you know, Past 10 years I've been shooting landscape. Mm -hmm. I really don't know how to use stroke anymore, but, but there's a chance, there's always <laughs> a chance. Yes. Uh, here, uh, actually, a couple of days ago, I was uh, digging through my archive and tried to find something. But this show up, which was a project I did it when I was a school of visual art, which was my very first st uh, stitching image. And this was my uh, Taiwan's home's living room. And uh, the project was about, uh, because both of my parents, they are educators. And usually, when you go to someone's house, you will see all the children's war on their wall of living room. But in my house, it's totally opposite. Because both of my parents, they are too good to, and so, they, so I have been under pressure all, all the time, and, and they are coming in two days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this was the first uh, stitching I did. You, you can see still a lot of uh, places not perfect, and. Uh, so, so before we jump into the work you're pretty well known for, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you um, what it was like in those early years as as a student. But what was your what was your experience? I mean, you you were lucky in a sense to have spent several years in Vancouver, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like you were just dropped into New York City, but um, into a completely different culture, which you had. To, Vancouver is your way station, I suppose. But what, could you tell us a little bit about what your life was like when you began here as a student, fitting in, where you lived, that kind of stuff? Because I you think know, it's important. You know, the, the first day when I fly from uh, Vancouver to New York, first day when I arrived, New York was so dirty <laughs> compared to other city. okay? But three months later, I said, it's so dirty, but I love it. Because everything you need 
is here. I mean, as a photo student, as an artist, and uh, and for me uh, to to live in the middle of Queens and co commuting with uh, number seven all the time, which is uh, I because I'm a photographer, so I look at people and study people, and you know, on, on the number seven subway, the only language you're not gonna hear is English. And so <clears throat> there was this uh, idea been generating for my project, so I start to shoot eight by 10 portrait under the number seven subway, but it wasn't working at all because just, it's not sp speaking to you, it's speaking to me actually. But also I noticed uh, all the people who settle down around number seven subway, they usually will bring their own <coughs> culture to Queens. And so they will try to make their surrounding more like their home. And that's just a uh, click. And also uh, if we look at this, this body of work, uh, people will usually ask me, Jeff, why, why, why number seven? Why not number six? Why not each trend? Oh, I usually will say, oh, this is my hood. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know my area very well and uh, I eat there all the time and I, I study, the, study the area. And also because I was shooting eight by 10 and the multiple panel, uh, you have to scout first. So there's nothing like uh, when you bring the camera, you go out, I'm gonna shoot it today. No, it's not like that. I usually will go out three, three, three scouting and different type of day to study the light. And uh, I only make one image per day. And usually will take two weeks in the computer to put them together. At, the, at this time it was all sheet, yes. eight by 10 sheet film. Eight by 10 sheet film. And uh, f for this picture I took about two or three hours. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, and this picture was took about two to three hours. So if you look at picture closely, you found left to right, the light is not consistent. So the angle of the light is shift a little bit. So I love that. And uh, you know, b because I cannot be better than making them photographer, so I have to get out the documentary, get out the photojournalism, try to make photography as art. Mm -hmm. And this uh, was five points, which was gone now. And that was about 10 years ago when I had the chance to shoot this. Yeah, very sad, actually. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, um, from a conceptual standpoint, mm -hmm. why did you feel you needed to photograph every stop along the way? Yes, is there, is there Th this was, I need to correct you, because it's not about every stop. Mm -hmm. It's about every community okay. around number seven, yes. Good, yeah. And uh, y as if you're writing number seven to sunny side, you're gonna see a lot of Irish, Greek, and now maybe some Latino. When you go to West side, there are Korean, there are Latino, and the Jackson High, you have Indian, Middle Eastern, Tibetan now. And they all, they all settle down around this this number seven, this river for me. And uh, when you are writing number seven, if you want to s get a seat, you can expect this person going to get off in two stop. And you're gonna, that's how I see things, yeah. <laughs> and then if you see a Chinese who's sit, sitting there, they're in for the long haul. Yes, yeah. something like that, yeah. <laughs> and for me, number seven, um, and also about Number seven, because the Queens is the most diverse area on earth. So anywhere you look at it, it's a combination of several culture they mix together. And visually, it's just very interesting to me. Yes. And uh, because with the eight by 10 camera, the film actually recording more than your human eye can see. So when this is go large, actually my, my print is about this size, like a 40 by 96 which you still can see every single one's uh, face expression and the uh, nice detail and the color, yeah. 
So how many how many uh, exposures roughly per f when you were shooting this mm -hmm. this series? Um, this w this one will be s about maybe two, two maybe six shots. Mm -hmm. But uh, I usually every single frame I will shoot several of them, mm -hmm. and uh, because during the eight by ten days, I only can carry so many film holder like ten. That would be the maximum. Mm -hmm. And uh, you shoot, you make uh, 20 exposure, and the picture have to be there. And uh, yeah, that was a, that's a lot of challenge, which is a lot of fun. And every click is like a $15, $15. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if you guys are a large format photographer, you guys know that every click is $15. Um, this one was shooting inside the subway station. And uh, that took maybe two weeks to get a permit to shoot, and sometimes that that forever, yeah. So this was obviously, was you, it was, as we all saw, the earliest series. So this is, this is actually your most historic work, I suppose you could say, <laughs> uh, from the series. And and Queens has changed a lot since mm -hmm. this time. So I'm wondering, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at these, do you have certain nostalgia or do you do you think like oh this this looks completely different now like are, are you no, tempted I, I can see a lot of imperfection now oh in in technically yes and uh, <laughs> and uh, for for this angle of view i cannot go back because they will they won't allow me to sure to go but, back but from a but from just like a, a feeling of you know your home and place when do you look back at these locations and what you see in these pictures and have, um, what kind of emotions do they bring to you? Uh, I, you know, that, because of every shooting is so much, uh, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you ask me what happened that day, I can tell you exactly what happened. But uh, for my picture, Every single picture for this Habitat 7, I try to recreate the atmosphere of that particular place yeah. with, a, with a camera. So, I guess what I'm getting at is like certain neighborhoods have changed. Yes. And do you, how do you feel about the way they've changed? If they, I, I'm always feel very positive of changing because I can always go back to shoot again. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, but it's but it's also where you I mean you live yeah. in Queens yes. and so you have to experience you know this it, it, every day. It feel like uh, when when you are walking to uh, writing number seven, mm. and in in my head, the picture just pop up. I did this here, I did that there. So you have all this association yes. of your your history. Yeah. But you don't you don't. Uh, you don't mourn change, you, you kind of embrace it. And I, I think a photographer only can preserve the moment. Mm -hmm. You cannot stop the changing, I found my experience. That's beyond your pay grade, huh? <laughs> if we got paid, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thi this was, thi actually thi this picture, it changes so much now. Everything is, is re uh, renovated. And uh, this one took me about three trips to shoot. And uh, the third time, I was up with a, a ladder and t tall tripod shooting. And there was this elderly guy who come up to me and like, oh, I saw you like shot two times here already. I said, yes. But why you always point at your camera at very uninteresting building? <laughs> you know, I love this kind of interaction, mm -hmm. when, especially when you walk under a dark clothes. And someone just pop next to you and talk to you, and you're like, "What? What's going on?" <laughs> that, that was fun. Yes. Does that inform inform your kind of feeling of the neighborhood and what you yes. key on later, mm -hmm. particularly when you can include sp mm -hmm. specific people or scenes? But for me, I when I shoot this place, I usually will go eat first. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel what 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 they were thinking and to breathe their air and. And later on, I would decide, okay, how can I make Try to understand picture? the neighborhood. Yes. yes. Um, this was uh, the, the spray, uh, New York Times magazine published. Right. So you won, so you won uh, the Capture the Times 
photography uh, prize and, and had this nice spread in the New York Times. And then we'll see, I think, after this, installation shots from a show that happened at the Queen's Museum mm -hmm. pretty quickly afterwards. So you had some pretty immediate success with this work, and I'm just wondering how that roller coaster felt at the time. Um, you know, the New York Times came out on Sunday, and the Monday I received a call from an art dealer, and Tuesday I had a meeting with a collector, and Wednesday I had a book. That was like, boom, boom, boom. I was like, what? <laughs> then, but that was, it happened like that. And mm. uh, for me, uh, I also, I actually pushed them a little bit back because I say I need maybe another half year to finish up the whole project. Mm. So that took a while. So the book was published 2007, early 2007. Yeah. And this was an uh, installation shot uh, at Queen's Museum 2006 we decided to do everything with a light box. So you will see all the light box surrounding. Yes. And also this was the animation of the show I had at the Getty Museum. Yes. Yes. So following Habitat 7, you spent two years photographing well, let's say the the, the, wane, the waning years, of, waning year, I guess, of, of Shea Stadium, mm -hmm. its event, eventual demolition, and then the construction of City Field. How, how did that come about? And, and mm -hmm. Show us some pictures, because this is work that has never, it, you never have shown it extensively. Yes, I, I should tell you the story behind it. When you had a good dealer, your dealer will push your work out. When your dealer, he, she didn't know about baseball, she's not gonna push your project. Mm. <laughs> okay, and this project was just because it happened to in my backyard, and I was there. And uh, I also had the privilege to get the permission from the Mets to let me have access to documenting the whole very last year of Shea Stadium and also the, uh, the whole construction of City Field, and later on the demolition of Shea, and the first day of City Field. And this took me like three years. Yeah. Are you, are you a baseball fan? I, I am. You, yeah. you will see. I, I, can, I can tell you, um, the, the last picture and this four were all shot at the same location, and just every half year, things change. And you, if you look at closely, <laughs> Uh, the, you can see the city field grow in the mm -hmm. picture, yes. And that was like a very last game at Shea, yeah. Yes. And this was the, uh, I was shooting an 8x10 in the press box and reverse. Yeah, ev uh, everyone in the press box was shooting on the, towards e the field. The field right? With yeah. a long lens, I was, uh, like, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun to do this. Yes. And, and at this time, I was really crazy about stitching. So here are about like 28 by 10. And when, you, when this picture is large enough, you can see every single person's face in the background. And how, how long, like... How so you have to be very patient, and very patient in terms of making the pictures, but also in terms of then producing the image. So how long does, like, how much computer time it's goes uh, into, like, some of these? You shoot about three to four hours for one picture, and it took me about two weeks, about 10 hours a day to process it, to scan and everything. And, but it, it's getting easier because you know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. I, and when you, nothing compared to if you look at 8x10 slide on the light box. One, one 8x10 is already amazing. 20 of them are so much fun. <laughs> and I know baseball. 
you know, this 47 ton Glavin, this was his two, uh, 297 win. You know, I was there. I was yeah. almost, I, I went almost every game, even without shooting. I, I got a, the whole pass. You got there. a pass. <laughs> that's that's reason game. enough yeah. to do the project. Yes. <laughs> and this was the very last concert, uh, Billy Joe's concert at Shea. So. And this time, I think this was the very first time I used digital camera to shoot. Hmm. They only gave you 15 minutes in one spot, shoot it, then go. So that's what. But as much as you like baseball, it's also mm. on cue yeah. and about architecture and infrastructure and so yes. you you're working both yes that, sides. That, that's a good thing because you don't keep if you keep shooting a game for two years that's too much but this was a lot of fun and i have my own helmet and everything every time when i go in you had a hard hat yeah it, you, i think you, you yeah we knew each other right you always say jeff there's a why there's a hot head in your car all yeah. the time yeah i was I actually had a collector who tried to publish this book, but uh, he passed away. <laughs> so this, this project just just gone. Right? So, and this was the uh, the the demolition of Shea Stadium, and it happened so fast about mo this than a month. Everything was just tilled down and gone. So yes, that's the very last piece. And also the opening day of uh, City Field. So, so this was a, a, a self-motivated project, even even if you had permission from the Mets. I mean, you didn't do this for this wasn't for Citibank or mm -hmm. for the Mets. This was your own project. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think we're going to see coming up a few projects. Yeah. At the same time. That, uh, Bronx Museum, they commissioned me to do this project. Right. So I have a little bit of money too. I can go back and forth. Go back and yes. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering, like, you know, is so we're gonna look at some Grand Concourse pictures. Um, I'm I'm just curious if there's any kind of difference in approach for a project in which, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're being asked specifically to make pictures as opposed to pictures you're making mm -hmm. on your own. Yes, uh, you can do that. Any answer that any time <laughs> in this slideshow. Yes, uh, because when you work with a museum, uh, they have certain requests. Okay, Jeff, we want this, we want that, and uh, which spot or which location you should go back to shoot. I think that actually make my life easier, hmm. and uh, it just. Uh, I think oh. All the good photograph, you just need to make your own study and your, the history of the place, and you will always come up with an idea how to how to make this shot and uh, how to make sense. Um, for this project, uh, we uh, I was hired to do to photograph the Grand Concourse for its uh, hundred year anniversary. So my, my main purpose just shooting around Grand Concourse and to 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 document the the most vivid part of Grand Concourse, and also uh, at the time Bronx Museum asked me say Jeff bring your color to Bronx, so you know let what you let you developed a reputation for uh, for from my Hepatitis Seven so so the, yeah let's keep things going and. Uh, and the, to shoot shooting at night time in Bronx is tricky, and uh, you need to be very self aware. <laughs> I, I, I I actually got pulled over by a cop and saying, "This wasn't a safe place to shoot." 
You should go. Because you still ha you still have the eight by ten camera. No, at the time when I I, I rent uh, eight by ten and the digital camera, so okay. I have back and forth. Yes, a couple of the tripod on the ground, so they were afraid that things will happen. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, this was in Bronx Zoo, which is also going to be in the show. <coughs> Home of many a graffiti writer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In case you guys don't know, uh, Sean recently just <laughs> become the graffiti artist to go to the curator. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the graffiti expert, New York yeah, graffiti expert. Currently, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also decided to do every single building on the Grand Concourse. <clears throat> And this was shot like three days and uh, three months of photoshopping together. And, and this was actually exhibited at the Bronx Museum the yes. entire length. Yeah, it's we pretty have, impressive. We have the print is 10 inch by 240 feet. Right. So it's really long. And uh, for, for the people who live on the Grand Concourse, they can point out which building right. they live in. And Much easier to walk than the, the, whole, the real thing. <laughs> And so here comes your baseball again. You get baseball yes. and construction, you can't seem to avoid it. Yeah, and you know, there's, uh, it, I, there's a regret for my project in 2007. Because Yankee didn't play well. So I couldn't <laughs> get the access. They don't allow people to shoot inside. So I was, <laughs> but you know, th this picture was like a, a collection of all my technique over the years. Uh, this was shot about six hours from uh, late afternoon until 9 p.m. So this picture is a mix of a lot of light mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of, uh, you see the, the car light and the people standing still and walking on the street and also the sunset, which is not going to happen at once if you don't look closely. And also if you see the tree over there, those were shot in the afternoon and later on put together so make them seem this. Yeah. And I'll just, and, and for me, I mean, that's all interesting. I, I, this is just a, a general thing. It's like, for me, as a, a New York museum person, um, you know, it has, of course, it has Yankee Stadium and in a particular moment in time, but it also has the Bronx uh, County Courthouse and it has, um, is it has part of the con Grand Concourse just as it's being um, rede redeveloped and, and putting mm -hmm. putting in, um, um, I forgot what they're called, uh, plazas, let's, let's call it. Um, so you, you, this is a, mo a moment in time, a document, um, and, and an aesthetically it's interesting. It, but it's, and that's the whole mm -hmm. conundrum of it all, and that's why for the show, um, we've we have this, a subtitle mm -hmm. called assembled realities because mm -hmm. everything you're actually photographing is there, mm -hmm. but it's all compiled into a new picture that is that never actually happened. So there is this kind of complexity to it that's okay. to say lightly. Um, 2010, I decide that I need to have a summer project, which was Coney Island. And uh, <laughs> this was the time I was thinking, okay, let me just go out to make six image. So I would be really happy for this summer. But uh, it just ended up, I would keep going and shoot like about 20 and make a book out of it. I mean, and how familiar were were you when you when you said Coney Island? How familiar were you with it? I had you ever been there? Yes, when I was a student, I was shooting the Mummer Parade for maybe three times, mm -hmm. and that's it. But uh, go back with the eight by ten is another story. You have to study the area very well until you shoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it was. I go there maybe twice a week for whole summer. Mm -hmm. 
for scouting, for shooting. So I know the area pretty well now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, <laughs> the, 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 the very interesting thing was during the time Coney Island just started to redevelop. And I was just lucky to it's capture perfect timing, the, the timing. Yes, yes. So did you, because uh, I know you do like to kind of do some historical research. Did you kind of dig into the history of Coney Island at all? And how, you know, the cyclone had been, you know, like its importance yeah, historically? I, I, for me, to shoot this, I have to ride the cyclone <laughs> to feel it. And it was scary, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, and also I have... I usually went through all the photographers, the great photographers oh, who okay. shot the Coney Island before. Mm -hmm. And you you still need to think, okay, uh, can I create something different? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think thi this this project, who, which is reveal more of my technique, mm -hmm. it's easier to see it because I try to pull them all out. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You, I mean, there's, there's definitely more time exposure yes. present. Uh -huh. More obvious, yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're tipping your hand a bit more in these pictures than previously, yes. in an obvious way. I mean, I suppose a, a trained eye would, would have seen it previously, but now it's more overt. Mm -hmm. for, for this project. Yeah. And uh, at the time, I also uh, just half of this project was shot with 8x10, and half of this was shot with a digital medium format camera. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was really playing with uh, what can I do with the digital camera right. at the time. And but I the timing is perfect. I mean, it's just when they were redeveloping Luna Park. Mm -hmm. And we also have this piece just just going to be up at the Deutsche Bank uh, on Wall Street, oh. and which is going to be the satellite show of our show. Yeah. So. And if if I was shot with eight by ten, I probably not going to capture the picture like this one. Everything's moving, and uh, you have to be everything need to be sharp. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is fun, and uh, this is this is for me like a perfect New York picture. <laughs> I mean, you see, of course, you see the diversity of of people in the foreground, which is something you've been obviously interested in all along. But then, in the middle ground, you see, um, you know, the new Luna Park. In the background, you see the cyclone, which is kind of nods at the the earlier amusement parks. And then, in the background, you can see the public housing. Um, so you see mm -hmm. kind of all. You see the the. In, in a sense, the entire history of, of Coney Island in this picture. Hmm. Yeah. Top Gun. Yes, and here I, I kind of uh, <clears throat> made my own camera, a DIY camera, so I can tear and ship, so create this picture right now. Is this the first time you did that? I mean, because we see it in, you know, pictures. Yeah, this like was earlier than the flat area, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. But, so is it, 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 actually we've never really talked about this too much. Is, is it, is it tilt chip? I mean, is, is part of it completely out of focus, and part of it, like, are they multiple pictures, some are in focus, some are uh, out of focus? Yes, selective and focus plus teal and shift and stitching. That's a very common. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they, they all shot in different sections. All right. So to put together. Yeah, this here is, like, too crazy, you know. Create something... Uh, you probably can feel the air. I, I try to. Yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah, it, you feel the, with the, the hot with air in, in Coney Island with the hot dog sm smell and the, the, the beer. And that's me. Yeah. There's definitely a kind of kinetic yeah. energy in these yeah. in some of these pictures.
So uh, 2012, we started to work together. And uh, I had this idea about, I have, want to make a project about five borough. And the only borough I really don't know much was State Island. And uh, I did my research and I did my scouting. Maybe I went, I, I drove there about 20 times. I just really couldn't find the image until I talked to uh, City Museum's uh, one of the historians. Yep. And she actually point out where can I can shoot and uh, just make life easier. And uh, yeah. Kind of help you identify the historically significant places. Yes, and, and uh, I, I noticed uh, as a photographer and as a historian, we see things so differently. Yeah. And yeah, there was, yeah. Sometimes they're just after uh, um, specific things about a place, right? Yeah. And, and As opposed to an so aesthetic quality. So building is great, I think, no, it's not. Yes. Yeah. And this, this was one of the, the, the section when I went out to shoot, I got caught by police and uh, I have to bail myself out with the, uh, yeah, that was. Where was this? I can't remember this one. This was a Seaview Mental Hospital. Oh, okay. And I just drove in and shot it and they say you, you want to allow and <laughs> it happened, yeah. You were, I was just there and I did it. Yeah. So you can you can actually see some of the remnants of maritime yes. New York. There's probably still oysters out there, although you might not want to eat them. You don't you don't want. Yeah. That was a dump. Yeah. Uh, this is a flash kill park. I think in what thirty five years they're going to open to public. Mm -hmm. So it's actually really nice inside. And just I don't know if you're going to show them, but I know they had you photograph um, the different type, types of, of housing, and uh, you know because Staten Island is probably as close to suburbia as you can get here. So, I mean, in, in terms of like working again with the Bronx Museum on the Grand Concourse project and MCNY for uh, the Staten Island exhibition. Um, I'm sure you made pictures that you probably wouldn't show again otherwise, but <laughs> overall, um, I'm, I'm just curious, like, did, did you find you liked working that way? I mean, because the rest of the stuff we're going to see was also mm -hmm. self-directed. Uh, you know, over the years I learned uh, the process of uh, to work for a magazine or folk yeah, right, because as, as Leslie said, you've done work for New York Magazine, and, and you, you just did something for, who, who was uh, Departure, it? Yeah. Departure Magazine, yeah. so, yeah. So I, I learned through the process over the years, and uh, when, whenever they call me, say, Jeff, do this, do that, and I, would, I usually will tell them, okay, I only will do one picture. Right, yeah, because a day's shooting And, and you, know, you know, all those editors, picture. they don't know me, they know, like, really, just one? You do too, maybe? No, <laughs> it, it, it was funny. And, and uh, I would tell them, I would do my scouting with my iPhone and say, okay, I'm going to do this, and it's going to be look nice. And uh, I, I, here, I need to really thank for uh, Jody Kwong, which mm -hmm. gave me the very first assignment and uh, many, many later on. Mm -hmm. And she just trusts my vision to do things. Right. And I will usually only shoot, I will say, Jeff, go to shoot Unicolo. I said, uh, I will only do one. I said, try it. Then <laughs> I sh was shooting with 8 by 10 and it worked. And uh, later on, there's just more um, project coming to me. And uh, that, yeah, I, I think if you 
put all your energy, the whole day's energy into one picture, it's going to be a lot better than you shoot hundreds of them. Then you have images. to start editing. It so, works for you. Yeah. So. so we just got the five minute sign before we do questions. So I know you have a lot of slides. So, so go. It's okay. You guys can come to the show and see yeah, the rest of it. Buy the book. Yeah. So um, we're going to have this one in 60 by 200 inch, and which is a really long one. And uh, this is entire street of uh, 42nd between 7 and 8th Avenue. And you can see every single building. And I was shooting about 30 different locations with a digital camera. And this shot was about 800 frames and put together, and which is really fun to look at it. I don't and know how you can see anymore yeah, after, and, 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 after and, and staring at a and computer. And people ask me, so Jeff, wha, how, how, where, where you found the time to do this? I say, this is all I do. I, I don't do anything else. I only make a photograph. So it's me, yeah. And then we, we also have this one in the show for sure. And this, yeah. So a lot of these are more recent pictures. Yes. Um, uh -huh. You know, the thing was uh, I had an argument with my previous dealer. So there was a period of time I didn't have a chance to show my new work. Hmm. So, and uh, which is great in the in in my our new book, mm -hmm. it's like thirty percent of the image are new have never been seen. Yeah, yeah, which is great to work. And so um, there's there's this kind of back and forth between a photograph like this, which is very much about you know people in the park and then there are the previous one which was more about the urban landscape and in that case Jane's carousel with mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Bridge in the background and you kind of go back and forth mm -hmm. um, with these you know up close far away and I'm, I'm wondering um, uh, how do you decide I suppose certain mm -hmm. locations demand certain um, it's sometimes it's depending on the picture and also sometimes the, the person is more interesting than landscape. So you just need to adjust and uh, make the picture work. I, 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 I've never said this to you before, but I, I, like, I like how every once in a while you just, you know, you just kind of take on the assumption that people know this stuff. Like in this oh, yeah. picture, like people know the Brooklyn Bridge. You can assume so people know the Brooklyn Bridge. You don't have to have it as the focus, you know. And oh, and yeah. I like I appreciate the fact that you're you're focusing on the people because I just assume like, people know. So yeah, I, like the the yeah, fl so. the Flatiron Building, which I'm a, I can't remember if you have that or not in here, but I love that it's this big picture and the Flatiron Building, which is kind of so iconic, is is out of focus and it's uh -huh. just the people. Yep. I just had to say that. That's how in Nazem, again, for anyone who's interested in street art. And this was the New Year's Eve uh, firework in Central Park. I was shooting from the Dakota building, which is very nice. And this was my... Uh, Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. And you didn't pick me. <laughs> we did an exhibition on sort of Hurricane Sandy. I figured you were getting enough uh, real estate oh, okay, in the museum. Yeah. But this, is, this one's great. This is a nice picture. And this was the cover of my book and also the, uh, the assignment for New York Magazine. Hmm. And I was on the penthouse of uh, Frank Gehry Building, Lower Manhattan. And this was a shot. We okay for time? Yeah. Spent a bit of time out at Governor's Island photographing as well. 
I'm not sure how many do I have. But, I think uh, just the one. This is the stuff I like. I like this is like you blue, don't like a blue collar light, right? Bro Brooklyn. I like the gritty. <laughs> I like the br gritty uh, New York. Okay. You don't get any grittier than the Gowanus Canal. <laughs> so uh, my entire book is about five borough. So, so later on I went back to Bronx, uh, Queens, and Brooklyn to shoot more and. Uh, So we, we were just talking over the past few days about this is 10 years. It does line up approximately with the Bloomberg years. How, do, how comfortable are you with, with these pictures as a stand-in for a representation for, for the Bloomberg years? Uh, for me, part, um, past 12 years, uh, during the Bloomberg's year, oh, I can This, this I, is yeah, Occupy this Wall, Occupy Wall Street, Street, we should say, yeah. right on cue. Yeah, during the last 10 years, I feel Bloomberg did something, not something worse, but something not better, but at least... Different. Different, but not worse, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, uh, to photograph New York City, I usually look at the positive side of the New York, so... I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yeah. fair enough answer. <laughs> this one was made for Leslie, I think. Yes. <laughs> Leslie Pacific Order, Jeff, go shoot the Pepsi. No. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, the, the tricky thing about this picture was I have to wait during the rainy day to, like, to make the reflection work. Otherwise, it would be too plain. And this was also the assignment for the New York magazine. San Gennaro Festival. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many you have left, but maybe we should uh, open oh, it up. We for have questions. to see this one. This okay. One is, yeah. Last one. Uh, I'm not sure how many, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want, why don't you why don't you just can you put it on on like like on the slideshow to run? I, I don't know how to. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a very very last one. Oh, oh okay. This is my uh, Harper. Yeah. And the, yeah, he made me addicted to this place. But this is a great. I blame you. And this is the very last one. Yeah, this is our this is the show that's going to be at the museum. Okay, so uh, why don't we, if anyone has any questions, um, open it up. Aperture.